Hey YouTube, welcome back to Dwayne's World. So is your McLean in need of some maintenance? Well, this is the video for you. You better stay tuned. All right, so welcome back to season two, episode 23 here on Dwayne's World. So what are we doing today? Well, I'm gonna be taking a closer look at my buddy's 25 inch McLean. Now, thank you for all that have watched my comparison video, but as you guys know, I did feature the 25 inch McLean in that video. One of the things I did notice during that video is the carburetor was starting to surge. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that today. We're gonna to go ahead and replace the carburetor. At the same time, we're gonna go ahead and replace the air filter along with the spark plug and also replace the belt. All right, so full disclosure, whenever I've attacked any maintenance items, on my real mowers or real mowers that belong to buddies of mine, I've generally had good success in being able to fix the problem. But in this particular video, not everything always goes to plan. You wanna find out what I'm talking about? Well, stay tuned towards the end of the video and I'll further explain. The mower we'll be working on today, this is a 25 inch GR series McLean. Now this is a little bit of an older model because it does have a Briggs & Stratton Intec 206 motor. It is a five and a half horsepower motor, but that is the motor today we'll be working on and doing some of the maintenance items that I talked about earlier in the video. Now, one of the things that I did want to point out is this has been adapted with a real rollers front groove roller. It's a very nice upgrade. I highly, highly recommend anybody that has a true cut, a McLean, a California trimmer. If you're running caster wheels, make that upgrade and head over to realrollers.com, order up either a smooth roller or a groove roller because it absolutely would change the performance of any real mower. And it's definitely one of the first upgrades you should consider when you're getting into real mowing. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the air filter cleaner by just simply unscrewing the top nut here. And then go ahead and take that off. And then we'll go ahead and remove the air filter there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove these two bolts here, along with it looks like there's one other top bolt here. My camera will focus, we'll go ahead and remove that. And that should remove the plastic portion of the carburetor. So that way we can go ahead and get access to the bolts that actually hold the carburetor to the motor. All right, so we're able to get that off. So now, we should have a much better view here of the actual carburetor. All right, so I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but you wanna go ahead and turn off the gas. That will definitely help. Uh, the gas is being fed through this hose right here, which ultimately gets into the carburetor. I'm gonna go ahead and take that part off there. All right, All right so basically I'm just gonna use some needle nose pliers here to go ahead and remove the clip that holds the gas line just to be able to move it up the line here. All right, I should probably do it there. Just a little bit extra just to be sure. I may go ahead and use this flathead screwdriver just to see if I can get this part started here, which is definitely gonna help me be able to get off that fuel line. Okay, that's pretty much what I was wanting to do. I'm gonna go ahead and just, got a rag here just in case. I believe if I just hold this in an upward position here, kind of just get it out of the way. It should prevent any gas from coming out. Yeah. Yeah, I got it there. As long as I kind of just leave it hanging up, shouldn't have a problem with any gas coming out. Perfect. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and release the governor spring in addition to the throttle cable there. All right, so let me take you guys for a little bit of a closer look here. If you guys look, the governor spring is somewhat bent out. I may be able to straighten it out, get a little bit better than that, but that is not the way it should look. Um, and I could be causing some of the surging issue. Either way, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the throttle here. Um, so that way we can go ahead and remove the carburetor. I'm just gonna start by removing the governor spring here if I can. All right, I got that off. Go ahead and see if I can just pry up on it here with my screwdriver. Hopefully should be able to just get it, wiggle it out here. Almost there and there she's coming. There we go. All right, so let me go ahead and just remove my I'm going to show you guys here. All right, so basically what I've done is I removed the throttle cable from there, and the governor's ring is held in with that smaller hole there on the left side. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and remove these two bolts here, and we should be able to get off the carburetor. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start by removing this back bolt here. Got that one off. And now the left one. 
guys can see there, the carburetor is now off. All right, so let me show you the carburetor I picked up from Amazon. Now, I did exclude a lot of the extra parts that came with the carburetor. The carburetor I picked up was actually designed for the Intec motor that has the flat filter. So what I did is I went ahead and picked up an aftermarket air filter there, so that way we can still replace the air filter. But one of the parts I had to use from the original carburetor, the uh, throttle choke lever. What I did is I ended up basically removing it from the old one here and installing it here on the new carburetor. All right, so in order to get this part out of the old carburetor, what you need to do is remove the butterfly valve. Now the butterfly valve I have here is actually a new one that was installed in the kit. But once you go ahead and pull that out, you'll be able to lift out that lever there. So now that I have this installed here, all I'm going to do is install the new butterfly valve into the little slot here. All right, so now that's in place, I'm going to go ahead and just test it out here. And you guys can see there, it now opens and closes that part of the valve. All right, so one of the things I do like is the fact that this plastic piece is now replaced by an actual metal piece there. I think that's going to last much longer and should work out much better. All right, so one of the things I did also want to use from the new kit is the new gaskets here that are included. So with that, let's go ahead and install the new carburetor. Right, so one of the things I am reusing from the original carburetor is the actual spacer plate there. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall that to the back of the carburetor. All right, so one of the things I'm going to do is I'm actually going to install the linkage first. I tried to get this on earlier by doing it after, and it made it a lot more difficult. So now that I'm able to kind of finagle the carburetor into place, now that should definitely work out a lot better. Right, so that works out a lot better. I went ahead and removed the carburetor again and I'm now reattaching it because I couldn't quite get the linkage on there. So now that the linkages are set up, I'm going to go ahead and reattach the fuel line here by go ahead and just slipping the hose. Now I think I got enough of it on there. Yep. Now I'm going to just go ahead and move the clamp into place. And we should be all set there. Now my plan was to get an OEM air filter, but could not find one. So I went ahead and decided just to go with an aftermarket one that had really good reviews. I'll go ahead and link it in the description below if you guys are interested. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and replace the spark plug here. I went ahead and already removed the air filter cover as well as the actual air filter. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the actual spark plug boot here to be able to access the spark plug. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and use an extension along with a 5 8 inch spark plug socket here to be able to go ahead and remove the spark plug. There we go. Came out fairly easily. And we'll see what this spark plug looks like. All right, as you guys can see here, it's coming out on the camera here. It's a champion spark plug. Not in the worst of condition, but not too bad. Either way, we're going to go ahead and replace it. Go ahead and use a Briggs & Stratton uh, spark plug. It's actually made for the Intec motor here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just start by hand threading it. You absolutely do not want to cross thread a spark plug whenever you're doing a spark plug replacement. All right, and just give it one good snug there. There we go. We're all set. Go ahead now and just replace the boot. And there we go. All right, so now all we've got to do is just go ahead and put our air filter back on, along with our housing, and spark plug job is now done. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and replace the belt. Now, a common question that I a lot of times get is, Dwayne, how often do I have to replace the belt on the McLean? Well, one of the things that is really great about the McLean is really the minimal amount of maintenance you really have to do. The belt is really the main thing that you do have to replace over a period of time. Now, some people like to be on the safe side and really do it probably every season. You know, I find you could probably get at least maybe two seasons out of it or maybe even three, just depending on how often you use your reel mower. However, it's always a good idea to have a replacement belt on hand in the event that the belt actually wears out. One of the things I highly suggest is just monitor it and take a look at your belt, inspect your equipment. So that way, if you see any signs of wear or it looks like the belt is about to break, you can go ahead and have your replacement ready to go. And you're not necessarily sitting on any downtime where you're not going to be able to use your reel mower. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to actually replacing the belt.
All right, so now as we actually are gonna replace our belt, there's a couple different ways that people tend to go about it. Some people like to just start by removing this little cover here. What I like to do is I like to start by actually removing the carter pin here, as you guys can see, and that's gonna allow this bar to be able to move out of the way, and that way I have much better access to the belt. So with that, let me go ahead and remove that carter pin. Right, so generally what I like to do is just go ahead and start by just straightening it out as best I can, and that way, hopefully I should be able to just pull it through using these needle nose pliers. And we're almost there. There we go. And now I'll be able to go ahead and remove the lever here. And now we can go ahead and move this out of the way. All right, so now as you guys can see, because of the bars out of the way, I can very easily now remove that bolt there uh, to be able to get the cover off. All right, and this is a half inch bolt here that I'm going ahead and using my half inch socket for. All right, so now that we got the belt cover off there, we can kind of look at the belt and a little bit closer here. The belt does not look like it's in too bad a shape, but at the same time, we're gonna go ahead and actually replace it. All right, so generally in order to remove the belt and put on your new belt, you're gonna to wanna to release the tension off this one pulley that's here that's attached to the clutch lever. Now, one of the things that I do do, rather than actually remove this actual spring here from either side, is I go ahead and just remove these two half inch bolts there, and I'm then e easily able to then move that bracket out of the way. Now, that's just the way I prefer to do it. I don't like to mess with that spring. A lot of times I have a lot of difficulty getting it back on, um, and I just find this way works a little bit easier for me. But you either have the option, go ahead and remove that spring there, or do what I'm doing by removing the actual bracket. I went ahead and just grabbed my impact just to make it a little bit faster here. So now I just remove the entire spring there, making it a little bit easier to be able to get access. Now I should be able to easily remove the belt. Be able to just go ahead and take off this belt fairly easily. All right. So there, and I'll just put some downward pressure here just to relieve some of the tension. Got it off the back pulley here. All right, so now I just got it on the one pulley. All right, so as you guys can see there, I went ahead and removed the belt. All right, guys, so I just want to jump in here on the video. I know you California trimmer enthusiasts are probably watching this video thinking, Dwayne, why have you not done a belt replacement video on the California trimmer? And I hear you. A lot of people have made that comment, so I will be working on one in the near future. So please make sure you do subscribe to my channel so that way you can continue to follow all of my content. But the reason why I haven't done one up to date is only because of the fact that my California trimmer really hasn't needed it. But I think now enough time has passed where I probably do need to replace that belt even if it hasn't broken on its own so again please look out for that future video it will be coming in the very near future all right so let's go ahead and take a look here at the old belt here just to see if we're seeing anything that looks like it absolutely should have been replaced you know i just see a little bit of wear you know kind of near here my thumb here uh, but overall the belt looks pretty good you know i find that a lot of times it breaks where this seam is um, that's one thing you want to definitely keep an eye on um, is i have seen belts start to split you know from about right there Kind of zoom in, see if you guys give you a little better shot of where that seam is at. All right, so even though the belt looks pretty good, um, we're still going to go ahead and replace it, um, only because of the fact that I can't tell necessarily how much this belt may have actually stretched. So, you know, with that, we're going to go ahead and install the new belt. All right, so one thing I just wanted to point out, this belt here is a 4L-195, which basically means it is a 19 and a half inch belt. So that is the right size for this particular mower, but you absolutely want to check the belt you have on there. I know in some cases people have done some modifications to their McLean's or they've done engine swaps and it may have actually changed the belt based on the pulley size there. But for the most part from the factory, it should be 19 and a half inches. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and just start to install the belt here. Uh, go ahead and get it around that guy there. And we obviously want to come around the pulley as well. And because everything is loosened up, it makes it a little bit easier to get around that pulley. And now we obviously need to secure it to the back pulley here. All right, so I'm almost completely on. The back of the actual pulley is not quite there. So a couple different ways of being able to get this on here. What I find works best is if you actually try to rotate the rear pulley there, um, that's going to help get the belt slipped on, as, and I just was able to get it on there. Let me point out something here, just so you have your belt in the correct configuration. Let me go ahead and move my camera. All right, so one of the things I just wanted to point out um, to show you guys the proper way to run your belt is the belt should not be coming around the front side 
of this actual clutch lever. It should actually be sitting where you see it here. So this bar here, that's your actual clutch lever, is going to be in front of your belt, not behind it. I think people have made that mistake in the past and they've actually ended up damaging their belt in doing so. What should happen with your belt, it obviously should wrap around your idler pulley that comes off your engine. It should come wrap around the pulley that's actually coming off your rear drive chain, as well as the pulley that actually is activated whenever you depress the clutch. So that is the proper setup of how you install a belt on the McLean. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get my spring back in place here. This is where, again, I prefer to just remove these two half inch bolts versus messing with the actual spring itself. This works a little bit easier for me. I'm gonna go ahead and just depress this here, just give myself a little bit more space. And now I'm under there. Now all I have to do is install the two half inch bolts that I took out. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and just get these hands started here uh, just to get it going. And then what I'll do after I get them threaded in, I'll go ahead and use my impact to go ahead and cinch it down. See, I'm gonna go ahead and just <laughs> cinch them down with my socket. No point in using the impact here. I'm pretty much almost already there. I think we're good. Now, one thing I just wanted to point out, if you ever needed to replace this bracket or this spring. I don't know if they're sold separately, but they might be sold as a set. Whenever this bracket is sold by McLean and you pick one up, you actually do need to bend it into this position here. The way it comes from the factory is actually in a straightened position and you need to bend it over whenever you're installing a new one if you ever had to replace that. Just something I thought I'd throw out. All right, so I think this is where a lot of people have questions after they installed the belt, is how do I know how much tension I should be applying to the actual pulley? Now, one of the things that you may be tempted to do is you may be tempted to go ahead and just reinstall the clutch lever here along with the cotter pin and call it a day. But one of the things I want to point out is as I'm depressing the clutch now, as you guys may or may not be able to see on the video here, it is starting to bow. That means there's too much tension that's on this actual bar. So how do you fix it? This is where this is your adjustment part of the actual bar. So if you've already hooked everything back up, you're going to go ahead and have to actually disassemble it. Because one of the things you're going to want to do is you're either going to thread either more tension or less tension by either lengthening or shortening this bar. Now, because of the fact that I had too much tension on this bar, you want to go ahead and loosen up these bolts. And I'm going to go ahead and shorten the actual length of this bar by adjusting it here in the center. And this particular one is a 5 8 inch, it looks like. And I'm just going to use an adjustable on the other side here. You can do whatever, you can use whatever tools you have to make this job easier. But I think this is going to be able to help. And I, as you guys can see there, I've now been able to break that, let, that nut loose. Now there is two separate sides you can adjust. You can adjust the top and bottom. And just depending on how much you'll have to go, uh, you may have to take length out of either side or length on either side. But I think I should be able to get away with only one side here. But basically what I did is I went ahead and moved this nut higher up. That's basically going to allow me to be able to thread the entire bar farther into this big bolt here that is for your adjustment. All right, so now let me show you guys how I'm actually adjusting this. Hopefully it's going to come out on the camera here. Let me kind of reposition it just so the point of view is better. All right, so now if you guys look, it's not really bowing. It's really going more in a straight. Now I can stay there and I think that would probably work, but, but just for the sake of being able to do this to the proper adjustment, I'm gonna go ahead and back it off a full revolution, go ahead and install my arm back here, give it another depress, and I'm still good, meaning I, it's still straight. It hasn't bowed. Now if I go one more turn, making it just another revolution, this is where I'm starting to bow. I don't know if you guys can see there, but it's starting to go off to the left. Or it's starting to go off to the left here as I'm depressing. So that is one adjustment too far. Now what I'm doing, I'm going to go ahead and just back it back down to where I was. And this is about as far as I want to go. Now I could probably go even a little less, but I think I'm happy with where it's currently set. Now all I got to do is tighten down this bolt and we'll be good to go. Because I do not have the clutch lever in the installed position, I have plenty of space to be able to access this bolt uh, so I can reinstall the actual belt cover. Obviously you have the adjustment where you can move it more forward here or more down, which basically increases the height on this side or increases the height here. I like to have it fairly even um, whenever I'm installing the actual belt cover. That way I ensure that the belt has plenty of clearance whenever the clutch is being depressed. 
All right, so as you guys can see there, I think I have plenty of space there and plenty of space there. And now we can go ahead and reinstall our clutch lever. Right, so now that we have the clutch lever back in place here, I can go ahead and reinstall the cotter pin on the opening. All right, so what I like to do is I like to go ahead and just bend over one side. Again, you do not have to bend over both sides. It's your choice if you want to. But basically by lifting this side of the cotter pin, that is not going to go anywhere, and that will fully stay in place. So with that, let's go ahead and test it out. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here, see how well the belt is going to perform. Part of the video i kind of want to explain why not everything goes to plan i even debated whether or not i would even put this on video because of the fact that it really didn't work out as you guys heard there in the video clip when i started up the mclean it really did not sound that great although the belt definitely worked and the belt replacement was a success the carburetor replacement was not a success it really sounds rough I don't know if it needs a different carburetor and the fact that that's an aftermarket one maybe i got a bad one but it did not feel like that motor and it doesn't propel really at the rate it should it runs and i can cut grass with it but it really is underpowered so i got with my buddy joel a few days ago after i did that carburetor replacement and kind of told him what was going on and his plan is i think he's trying to source another motor for the mclean that was always going to be the plan eventually either way, just because of the fact that that Intec 206 motor isn't really the motor that he wants. He really wants a Honda motor, so he's looking for one, and hopefully we'll be able to replace that motor and really get this McLean running the way it should. But at the same time, I figured, you know what? Let me put this on video for you guys. A lot of people have asked me about a belt replacement video, so I figured I can put it in this video along with the carburetor replacement, because if you are replacing a carburetor, not only on an Intec motor, a Honda GX motor, another Briggs & Stratton motor, the process is very similar to what I outlined in the video today. So I hope it helps you guys whenever you are looking at wanting to replace a carburetor on your particular real motor. All right, guys, so I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hope it helps you out on your particular McLean. But this video, again, is really an example of not everything always going to plan. Whenever we're watching things on YouTube or we're watching things on television, everything always seems to have a fairy tale ending. And that's not always the case. I'm going to be the first to tell you it's not a perfect world, even here on Dwayne's World. And with that, be excellent and party on.